Hello, my name is Kristen Bolden and I'd like to welcome you to The Other Side of History. In this um, little video, I would like to do some music and to give you the history of um, Wolfgang Mozart and also play some of the music by him. Now, Wolfgang's parents, they were Leopold and Anna Maria. Now, five of their children, they died actually in infancy. There's only two that survived. One was a daughter, her name was Maria Anna, and she was born in 1751. And the other was a son, and that was Wolfgang. He was born in 1756. So both of these children, they were child prodigies. Wolfgang, in his cradle, he heard the music um, that was being played by his sister during her music lessons. And at the age of three, he was already picking out chords on the clavier. Now, a year later, he was learning little pieces, and then at the age of five, he was already composing. Really quite amazing. Now, a family friend said of Wolfgang, as soon as he began to give himself to music, his mind was as dead to all other concerns. And even his childish games and toys had to be accompanied by music. So Wolfgang, he also loved arithmetic. His ear was incredibly acute, and his independence and his self-confidence um, are shown by a concerto that he is said to have written when he was only four years old. Um, it looked kind of like a daub of notes for the most part, written over ink blocks, his father um, had said. However, he could see that beneath the smudges, there um, was a piece there that made sense. It is so extraordinarily difficult that no one will be able to play it, said his father. So Wolfgang, he replied, that is why it is called a concerto. It must be practiced till it is perfect. Look, this is how it goes, and he proceeded to play it himself. So one of the more familiar songs of um, Wolfgang Mozart is Fantasia in D minor. And I would like to play that for you right now.
King's first public performance took place when he was only five and a half years old. Wolfgang's father knew the talent of his two children. Now Wolfgang's sister, um, Maria Anna, she was an excellent musician and composer also. And um, they would both perform together. It's been actually said that Maria Anna was just as good a musician and composer as Mozart. But in those times, females just did not have the same opportunity um, with a musical career or any career as that goes in that time. So Wolfgang, he was born in Salzburg, Vienna. And in Vienna, the empress was Maria Theresa. And she welcomed the Mozart family. Um, and both the emperor and the empress, they were both very delighted with this clever little musician, Wolfgang, um, who would actually invent little games to test his abilities. So he would like play the clavier uh, with one finger and um, he would also play with the keyboard covered with a cloth. He had these little games that he would do. Now Wolfgang's father tells how the charms of his son actually enabled them once to avoid paying customs. So uh, he says, for he made friends at once with the customs officer, showing him his clavier and um, invited him to visit us and he played him a minuet on his little fiddle. Thus, we got through. So, a little story from his dad. Now, Wolfgang would um, spontaneously jump onto the lap of the Empress, and he would throw his arms around her neck, and he would even kiss her. So, when the little princess, Marie Antoinette, um, picked him up after a fall, because they had this really polished floor that he fell on. He said, you are good. I will marry you. <laughs> so when asked by the Empress why he would marry Marie Antoinette, he said, from gratitude, she was good to me, but her sister stood by and did nothing. So while on tour, the Mozart family, they went also to London. Now, King George III, he was king during this time, and he was a lover of music. He especially loved the music of Handel. So remember, it was actually King George II who stood during the Hallelujah Chorus there at Handel's Messiah um, when it was being played. And uh, he made it a tradition for all to stand while the Hallelujah Chorus is being played. The king, he put Wolfgang into um, the paces, you could say. Uh, he gave him a whole bunch of difficult pieces by Bach and by Handel. And the boy, he actually sailed through these difficult pieces. So J.C. Bach was the youngest son of Johann Sebastian Bach. And he was actually the queen's music master. He was also impressed with this young musician. Wolfgang, he accompanied the queen in a song and improvised a charming melody on a bass by Handel. So the next song that I would like to do is Bori by um, Mozart and it's combined with the melody of a hymn that's composed by George Frederick Handel.
When Mozart composed his concerto in F major, it was the happiest period of his life, it's been said. He had just married his sweetheart, which was Constance uh, Weber. Now the concerto is really the sound of pure joy from the very beginning of the piece to the end. It can be thought of actually as one long minuet. However, on dancing, it's interesting what Mozart actually said. He said, I can neither by signs nor by pantomime express my thoughts and feelings, for I am no dancer. So Mozart was not a dancer. But I can by tones, for I am a musician. So that's how Mozart was able to express himself. He said, I'm no dancer, but I can express what's in me through my music. Um, now of marriage, Mozart said, he said, an unmarried man, in my opinion, enjoyed only half a life. <laughs> so Mozart, he did. He deeply loved his wife, Constance, and they had a happy marriage. Now of Constance, Mozart said this, he said, my Constance, is the virtuous, honorable, discreet, and faithful darling of her honest and kindly disposed Mozart. <laughs> so a couple years before Mozart met his wife, Constance, he was asked to write a piece of music. And this music was by a Salzburg businessman um, that he was to write for, and his name was Hafner. So the piece was placed at a celebration um, on the evening that was before the wedding of Hafner's sister. So this piece is actually called the Hafner Serenade and I've combined it with the melody that's um, to the hymn, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised. Now I believe that good music has the ability to draw us closer to our creator. Mozart said this, he said, it is a great consolation for me to remember that the Lord, to whom I have drawn near in humble and childlike faith, has suffered and died for me, and that he will look on me in love and compassion. So we can say amen to that, can't we? Now, um, at this time, I would like to play for you this beautiful little melody, um, the Hafner Serenade um, by Mozart. and. It's combined with the hymn, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised.
It is a sad fact that while Mozart was one of the world's greatest artistic legacies, he was buried in a pauper's grave. The reasons given for this actually were, um, one of them was his physicians. Medicine has not always put health above profits. And some have even said that Mozart really was poisoned. What we do know is that Mozart died of chronic kidney disease and he had racked up a huge debt in medical bills. Another misfortune of Mozart's was his involvement with the Freemasons. This is actually another reason that is given why Mozart died as a pauper. And I believe it's a warning for us to stay away from secret societies. Now, why Mozart would have been uh, persecuted by the Freemasons, I don't know. But once you become part of these secret societies, you are no longer free. You're not a free person at all. So the term Freemason is actually a very misleading term. Now, Mozart was around 27 when he composed the Turkish March, and it is one of his best known tunes. He was married actually at this time to his wife, Constance, and they had six children, but only two of them survived infancy. During this time of chaos that was in his own personal life, um, domestic life, masterpieces, they still flowed from his pen. And the Turkish March was one of these masterpieces. So the Turkish influence on Western music, it actually came through the Turkish military band music. And it was made popular by composers like Mozart, and also Beethoven and Strauss. So at this time, I would like to play for you this familiar tune of Wolfgang Mozart's Turkish March.
have loved the music of Mozart. Albert Einstein said that Mozart was actually his favorite composer, along with um, Johann Sebastian Bach. The music of Mozart and Bach had much of the same clarity and the simplicity and the architectural perfection that Einstein actually strived for um, in his own theories. However, far too early in life, Mozart, his constitution, it began to wane. At the age of only 35 years old, he was dead. In his short life, Mozart, he um, managed to write an amazing number of musical works. Mozart's compositions are actually often identified by the letter K, followed by a number. So the K, the K it actually stands for Ludwig von um, Kochel, who issued in 1862 a catalog listing Mozart's compositions as nearly as possible in the order in which he thought that they were written. I personally find Mozart's music to be graceful and charming. His melodies are beautiful and they're also beautifully balanced in kind of like phrases. Mozart's handling of the voice has never been surpassed. He would often write um, with specific singers in mind. The Mozart family was a tightly knit unit and they kept in touch with each other in writing many letters. And many of these letters have been saved and published. So they give us a picture of the life of this remarkable musician, Wolfgang Mozart. And I believe that Mozart really was a great composer with a warm um, sound to his music and also a warm human being who unfortunately died way too early. So if you have enjoyed this little uh, musical and talk, I would just like to encourage you to click on the subscribe and like button, leave your comments, and I just want to thank you for listening, and God bless.